it's not all about debt ceiling, partisan politics, and monuments in the U.S. Capitol. It's world-class art institutions as well. And that was the focus of Janet and my vacation in April uh, to see the art in D.C. But before I start showing you some of the museums we visited, I wanted to thank Brad Lindy for allowing us to use uh, some videotape we shot of Lena Sicali singing with his orchestra or ensemble at the National Portrait Gallery. And there's nothing like really great jazz music when you're in the nation's capital uh, looking for art, so, or looking at the art. There's so many places to do that, too, like the Hirshhorn Museum and Sculpture Garden. It's filled with so many artists in this, uh, the stories. There's like four stories of art in this building. You got Picasso, Matisse, there's Moore and uh, Nolan, and outside they have Calder and Rodin and Kuhn. It's just a fantastic place to start. Then there's the National Gallery of Art. It has one of the finest art collections in the world. They have some wonderful artists. Uh, uh, Lippi, Botticelli, Leonardo, uh, then they have uh, Van der Weyden, Dürer, Hall, Rembrandt, so many it's hard to name them all. I mean, they have Delacroix, Rodin, they have Degas. It's an art overload. And then there's the Corcoran Gallery of Art, and its focus is American art. They have a lot of permanent collection from Rembrandt, Picasso, Hopper, Kooning. I love that the Corcoran's mission is to be, quote, dedicated to art and used solely for the purpose of encouraging the American genius. These wonderful museums, you know, they compete not only with the tourist rich sites like the Capitol Building or Jefferson or Lincoln Memorial and the White House, but they also compete for attention with other world-class art museums. I mean, when you think about Paris and Chicago and Florence and New York, you really ought to think about DC. They Did you know that the only Leonardo da Vinci painting in the Western Hemisphere, an oil portrait of, if I can pronounce it right, Ginevra da Vinci, I'll go with that, uh, it currently hangs in the National Gallery of DC. Then after a short ride on the metro, you can get over to DuPont Circle. You can take a short walk through the most beautiful neighborhood. It's, it's, and, and it's so nice. Home of some of the nation's most prestigious think tanks and research institutions. It includes the Brookings Institution, the Carnegie Endow Endowment for International Peace, the Eurasia Center, and the Peterson Institute. It's also home to the original uh, Church of Scientology. And after your stroll, you can head over and pop in on the Phillips Collection. You can view Renoir's luncheon of the boating party. You know, the Phillips Collection was one of the first modern art museums in the world. You'll recognize a lot of the names there. Uh, we really like the O'Keeffe's and Van Gogh's and uh, there was uh, Cleese. And they're just, uh, it's a great collection. It's a great museum. They charge like 10 bucks. It's not a Smithsonian, but... After you head back over to uh, the Smithsonian or the National Mall, there's another great art collection as well that you can just walk up to, the, the Sculpture Garden. So it's fantastic. It has works by Calder, Lichtenstein, Moreau, and, and many more. Janet loved Moreau uh, and Calder and Lichtenstein. So. Anyway, uh, here's a list of all of the art museums in Washington, D.C. that are on the Internet. Uh, some of our favorites uh, you've already seen. So keep in mind, we spent three days and we covered about four or five thoroughly. Uh, one that I didn't see on the list was the Renwick Gallery, which was also cool. So uh, I hope this helps any art lovers out there uh, figure out where they may want to go. When you've overdosed on great masters, we highly recommend heading down to the National Gallery of Arts Museum's Cascade Cafe. It's over in the East Building Concourse. It has a great waterfall you can watch while you eat. Uh, it has skylight pyramids in the ceiling that kind of allow you to see people walking by or you can look down in it. Um, it also has this really cool moving sidewalk filled with light. It empties into uh, the gift shop and stuff, so it's really great. Uh, and of course, if you've never been to D.C., you really should plan some time for both the National History and Space Museum as well. Um, and remember, if it says Smithsonian on the building, then that means it's free. Because if you're a U.S. citizen, you own it. And if you're traveling to see art or to incorporate art into your trip, then Washington, D.C. is the place to go.